Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and welcome to the third video in the quadcopter tuning series. The list of all the other videos in the series is in the playlist to which the link is in the description. So if you would like to watch the series from episode 1 to episode N, because this is the third episode, like I mentioned, I, ha I still have no idea into how many episodes we will go, then just go to the link and see as this was recorded, because the order is quite important. In the first video, we took a quick look on the misconceptions of the tuning, and on the second video, we made a first maiden flight of our build. Could be a small quadcopter, could be a big quadcopter, it does not really matter, it's all about the process. And in the maiden I asked you to record a short black box lock. Why? Because now we will take a look at the short black box lock to A, find the base noise frequency, the noise frequency that motor and other things because it might not be motors and propellers we might have some kind of the resonance generates and this is the information of how low we can go with our filtering strategy and also we can take a look if there is something wrong happening with the basic PID controller so let's open the lock and take a look. Oh, by the way, I will be showing this on the example of INAV, but in case of the beta flight or the EMU flight, it's basically only the same. The process is the same, the only difference that in INAV to get the raw gyro traces, you have to have the debug mode set to gyro, while on beta flight you have to have the gyro scaled. And that's basically the only difference. So let's open the lock. The lock is open. And first of all, we do not really need a graph of the quad because it's useless. And today we also will not need a stick display. What we will need, however, is the graph of the gyros. And thanks to this, we will be able to take a look at what's happening and when. Good idea is to zoom out to have the broader scope on the gyro traces. And now, already we can see that, well, this trace, the trace on the pitch is, well, it's too thick. The good traces should look more exactly like that on the gyro. The thickness, it's relative, but the thickness like the red trace is showing is probably, maybe not, perfectly, but good enough set filtering strategy, while on the pitch we have those kind of strange oscillations. If we will zoom in that there is visible a low frequency, which is probably the movement, and something that looks like the constant frequency of some kind of the noise. So let's zoom out again and take a look at the spectrum graph on our traces. Like I mentioned, for the roll, for the red trace, everything looks more or less fine. Nothing strange is happening. On the yaw axis, situation is almost exactly the same. Here below 100 Hz, we have something that might be uh, maybe optimized in the future, but it's not relevant. However, if I will open the gyro on the pitch, there is a noise spike here around, let's say, 90 Hz. This spike over here is probably our main noise frequency. This will, of course, depend on the size of the propellers and the general purpose of the drone. This was those were 10-inch propellers. That that means that during the hover, this kind of matches, that the main noise frequency is around 80 to 90 Hertz. If this was something smaller, this first spike above, let's say 50 Hertz over here, would be further to the right on the higher frequency. But because I asked you to record a lock with the black box, yeah, black box, with the debug enabled, we can take a look at what the raw gyro traces are showing to us. So we will need roll pitch yo and if we will close the spectrum graph, we can take a look at what's happening on the pitch. Previously, we noticed that the 
speech tra noise transmission is probably the biggest. So now let's take a look one more time at what's happening on the pitch. And here, yeah, here we definitely see that, yeah, it does not look good. We have this huge spike on the noise generated by the, no by the motors around 90 Hertz. Then similar situation around 180, 190, which is not only the first harmonic uh, frequency of the of, of this frequency, but also uh, because the propeller crosses the arm twice during single rotation, so there are two gusts of the uh, of the air pushed, and this generates vibrations, and then stuff to the right. Usually, stuff to the right is not relevant because when we will set up uh, filters to fight with the first set of the uh, first spike in the frequency, we will most probably also attenuate them because the attenuation of the filter is bigger the further to the right to the higher frequency we go. Our target, our goal is this noise spike in this example at the 90 Hz. But like I mentioned, it's more or less the first raw noise spike above 50 Hz. And really, it depends on the weight, on the propeller, and on the usage on the multi-rotor. But in this case, this is 90 Hz. If we will be flying, for example, 5 inch drone, this most probably would not be 90 Hz. This would be closer to 9, 150, maybe even 200 Hz. But like I mentioned, it's your task to find the correct frequency and remember the base noise frequency we will be fighting with. That's all about noise. Now let's see if there is something wrong happening with the PID controller. So let's go back to the black box lock and this time instead of raw gyro traces, let's open the traces of the PID controller on the roll, pitch and yaw. How to do it? Relatively simple. Graph setup and from the graph let's add roll, pitch and yeah, and we don't need gyro and the gyro traces will only add extra visual noise. So let's remove the roll pitch and your gyros and just let's see what's happening with the traces. One more time, it's a good idea to zoom out and quickly scroll through the whole lock. We see that on the yaw, nothing wrong is happening, everything is more or less fine, we have relatively thin traces without any signs of the oscillations. The situation on the roll axis looks, well, kind of similar. There is nothing wrong. All the traces are thick. However, here on the pitch axis, we see that, well, something is not correct. And what is not correct? The D-term. The D-term is oscillating on the pitch axis. And we also can see that there is some oscillation on the P-term, the proportional part of the PID controllers. And uh, those will be two aspects that we will have to, two effects, two things, negative of course, that we will have to tune out in the first attempt to fix something how our drone flies. First, gyro noise and then probably we will have to lower the P gains because see we have a beautiful beautiful 90 Hertz spike over here on the D term and on the P term which basically propagates the gyro noise we also have a 90 Hertz. Luckily there is nothing wrong with the roll and the yaw so in the first attempts we will just have to concentrate on the pitch axis. Remembering that both P and D are right now oscillating at around 90 Hz. And this 90 Hz is really like a first clue that probably one of our low pass filters in the filtering strategy is too high. This is why in the next episode I will show you quickly which filters to change, which filters to adjust in both INAF 
and the beta flight. But for today, it's thanks. It's it's all. Yes, basically, it's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. If not, if you're not one of my patrons yet, then please consider becoming one because the patrons most probably are getting access to this whole series at least a few weeks earlier than the rest of the viewers. That's all for today. Thank you very much. And until the next one. Bye bye.